Hi, I'm glad you stopped by. In this video, we have three things that we want to do. First is a quick review of the important information that you should have in your possession. Second is a brief look at our certain future. And third is a show and tell time where I'm going to show you exactly how I download the items from the links. Some people have questions about how actually to do that and I'm going to show you. I also discovered that some changes have been made in some of the links and also a difference in the pricing of a couple things. Okay, first up is the source of your information. The, the very important thing to understand is that the information that you get, that's how you make your decisions based on that. That's why it's critically important that you have authentic, real information that comes from God. You need the King James Bible. You need the authentic spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, as a reminder, all the following items need to be secured in your possession. Don't just leave them online. Just tonight I was trying some of these links and the Adventist Digital Library has been changed and I was unable to download some things. But uh, we'll show you that later. Okay, the first item up is the Day Star. And this is the first publication of Ellen's first vision, which God gave to you. And it is for you. The number two item is O.R.L. Crozier's The Law of Moses, which is endorsed by God. Number three is Letters and Manuscripts of Ellen G. White. You have to go to the... Um, ABC to get that, the Adventist, um, Adventist Book Center. There we go. Couldn't remember the C. Okay, next one is The Present Truth, Numbers 1 to 11, and we that's to be downloaded. Uh, the next one is 1851, Christian Experience and Views. Number six is the 1854, supplement to the Christian experience and views. And these books are very critical, important information that contradicts what comes after James White's death. And that's why the importance of them. You've got to have the truth or you won't, will not be able to stand. The, the, all this garbage floating around will just sweep you off your feet. Okay, number seven is the original authentic testimonies for the church, numbers one through 30. And number eight is uh, spiritual gifts, volumes one to four. Number nine is the life incidents by James White, the 1880 life incidents by James White. Number 10 is Ellen G. White, uh, comprehensive Research Edition 2008 CD, and um, why would I go to the church for some of these things? Because I've proven them. Now, this White Estate CD has a lot of information on it. It's, the searching is very fast for those who are into it. And... Um, okay, your next additional research is the Review and Heralds. And uh, there's gonna be a link in the description. And now we're gonna get into some of the details about the future of this message that we may not have covered before, although some of them have been touched on. And I'm gonna go through this quickly and get to our demonstration of show and tell. Um, we're not going to give the references as uh, in this talk. As that's for the description. Read the description beneath and you'll get all the references. And first up, 
We are in the waiting, watching time. The Christian dispensation began with Christ's ministry. Um, since October 22, 1844, the dispensation of the fullness of time started and has overlapped the Christian dispensation now going on some 175 years. Second, the waiting, watching time closes with Sunday being made a test. Now, make no mistake about it. Uh, this plague and pandemic that is coming through with this coronavirus is could easily be the springboard for the creation of making Sunday a test. And we don't know but you must get ready. I may go to my grave before Sunday is actually made a test, but I have to be ready for that, and so don't you. Think about that. Number uh, three, the loud cry starts immediately as soon as Sunday is made a test. Now, this is why you need to be ready because the Holy Spirit is going to send you out if you are ready. And if you are not ready, you will not be sent out. And you may find yourself wondering what these crazy people are doing. And that's the power of God knowing who to use and who not to use. And it's not because you will not be qualified. You will be qualified by the power of the Holy Ghost. And your life needs to be ready for it because you're going to, we're going to live in heaven, in God's presence, without this dark veil this between us. Be ready for that if you really want to go. Okay, fourth, the loud cry ends the same way the midnight cry ended, with God sending every one of the faithful ones home, and probation closes. Fifth, the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Sixth, all the saints hear the tinkling of the bells on the hymn of Christ garment, and they know that Christ is coming out of the most holy place. Christ then completes the final ceremony by placing the confessed sins of the saints on the head of Satan. Seventh, Christ now changes his high priest garments for the garments of vengeance, takes his seat upon the great white cloud to leave heaven and come to earth. And as soon as he does that, then is when the seven last plagues are poured out on the face of the earth. Ninth, the wicked pass a death decree against the saints. Tenth, the voice of the Father, like many waters, is heard by the saints, stopping the wicked in their tracks, resurrecting all of those who have died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, who join the saints that have just been delivered from the time of Jacob's trouble, and together now they all listen to the words of the Father as he declares the covenant of peace that he is making with them and gives them the day and hour of Jesus coming. The 144,000 begin their watch for Christ to appear, and that's all of the righteous that are living at that point is 144,000. So the 144,000 is made up of two groups, those that lived through the time of Jacob's trouble, which is the time of trouble such as never was, and those that have died in faith under the third angel's message keeping the Sabbath. Okay, 
11, now appears the sign of the Son of Man. It is Christ on the great white cloud that appears first as a small dark cloud about the size of a man's hand. Twelfth, Christ calls forth the sleeping saints from all over the planet. They rise to meet Christ in the air, in the, and in the same moment, the 144,000 are transformed and rise to join the great multitude that no man can number. This is the end of the Christian dispensation because all Christians have died in hope of the resurrection. Together at last, faith is lost sight in the s correction. Faith is lost in sight as the seven-day trip to heaven begins and a destroyed earth is left behind. Thirteenth, the saints sit in judgment on the wicked for 1,000 years. Fourteenth, Christ returns to earth, bringing with him all the saints, the clouds of angels, and the new Jerusalem. He now touches the earth with his feet, at the top of the mountain, which splits in half and moves away to reveal a mighty plain. And the new Jerusalem comes down and sits on that plain. Fifteenth, Christ resurrects all the wicked that are to be punished. Satan deceives the wicked into fighting Christ and taking the city. But upon surrounding the city, fire comes down upon them and burns them up, then burns up the surface of the earth and transforming it into more beautiful than when Adam was given it. This ends the seventh trumpet and the third woe, for all evil woe is forever gone." This also ends the dispensation of the fullness of time because time will be no more. God bless your study and those that are interested can follow through as we click on the links and show you exactly how each link works. Okay, we're here on my channel page and we're going to right click on this video and open it in a new tab and I'm using Firefox and we are not going to play the video but I'm right down here I'm sh this is where that little circle shows up and it says show more and you can click on that and then this thing opens up now we're going to click on the day star. This is the first part of the day star. What I do is I right click with my mouse and it opens up the menu here with several options. And we're going to open this in a new tab right there. And you can see it's loading up. And right here it is, the day star. And then you scroll down almost to the end. Let it load up here a little bit. And, okay, we have to back up one page. Right here, a letter from Sister Harmon. And then you can cl click up here in the corner again. In the upper right corner, you see my little cursor there, and then you can save the file. Again, I'm using Firefox. Uh, whatever browser you're using, we're going to cancel that and get out of this. So, same thing works with Crozier's Daystar. I'm opening it in a new tab. And again, it's a PDF viewer, and it opens up with the Daystar Extra. So 
click out of that. And now we're going to go to, this is a link for the Adventist Book Center. And this is the book. It is uh, $45. It was $50. I paid $50 for mine. Um, and I have an extra one. If you are interested, I would um, be happy to sell it to you for that. Okay. Um, so that's the Adventist Book Sitter. We'll exit out of that. And then uh, this is where it gets interesting. This is, again, here's my mouse over here. And this link is going to take you to the Adventist Digital Library. However, they are abandoning this style or experience here. And we're going to, we, this is the supplement to the Christian Experience and Views right here, 1854. Very, very important material. And I open it in a new tab. Why do I open it in a new tab all the time? Because I don't like clicking the back button and waiting, waiting, clicking back and forth. Okay, now this item here, which is the supplement to the Christian experience and views, this is what it looks like here on my, you know, it's a pamphlet, but it's not loading up. And they want you to try this new beta version over here on this tab. So we click on this, and it tells us the new Adventist Digital Library interface. They want us to use that. And this is the important thing that you need to understand. You need to log in, which is ADL, Adventist Digital Library, and the password is 2300. Okay, so then you click down here. Those are very easy things to remember. You click down here and it automatically takes you to a new tab and it's loading. Now, my I put in the username ADL and I typed in 2300 and it's automatically filled in by my computer because I've been there already. Okay, so we click OK, and then it's going to load up and let us in. So, this is your search page, and you want to click on Advanced search and this makes it easier to find and get what you want. This is where you're going to put in the title over here and over here is where you want to put in the author. Okay, what I did is we're going to pull this up and we're going to scroll up here a little bit. And this is the Christian Experience and Views, and I created a short link for it. And same thing with the supplement. So right now, there may be a lot of people using this and so I don't, I have a, it's like, had a little bit of trouble a little while ago. I'm not sure why. Um, over here, under author, uh, you should type in white, W-H-I-T-E. 
And this brings up White Ellen Gould Harmon. That's the one you want to select. And then we want to type in Christian experience and views. And this should find, and then you have to click on this. You can't hit your enter button. Sorry about that. Okay. So um, I'll just tell you here, the, this first one is the best one. This was actually came from Hiram Edson's. This was his copy that he had. And it's amazing to me, but um, praise God, it's a great thing. This one right here looks like a pamphlet, too. These two are books that uh, are the same, pretty much the same pamphlet. One of them is a cleaned up, retyped copy and the other one is actual real copy um, inside a hardcover that somebody put together. This one over here looks the same, but when you check out the date down here, it is 1882. I do not recommend anything after James White's death with there are a couple of exceptions we'll get into that later down here at the bottom is the supplement and there are three of them here and um, I think I used the second one but they're all three from 1854 so this does not allow you to right click in here. You have to left click and then you have to go back to get the other one. So this one pops it up and it's got, you can check it out over here. I got my mouse over here and you can click on one of these and it's blurry at first and after it loads up the true image, then it comes in sharp and clear. There we go. And over here, it says color PDF. That's the one you want. This is the real, authentic, original material that you can trust. And you click on this, and this little circle is going to go and then there is a button to click to download it. I'm not going to download it because I already have so I'm going to cancel this but that is how you navigate this and after you get done downloading it remember to click your back button and then you can you need the Sketch of the Christian Experience and Views of Ellen G. White, the 1851, and you need the supplement to it. Both of those, the supplements, 1854. Very important information to have. Um, it's just essential. Okay, back over here, we have the authentic testimonies for the church. Now this is again going to the Adventist Digital Library. We're exiting out of that tab. And this is very important to remember. Uh, these are, there are hundreds of different testimonies for the church. So you have to scroll down Right over here is my mouse on the right, and you have to scroll down and down. I do not recommend any of these other collections. 
not from these older ones. And the reason is because, um, let's see, 1871, and let's go down right here. Testimonies for the Church, Numbers 1 through 11, 1871. It looks really good because it was published before James White died, 10 years before he died. Well, I checked it, and guess what? They changed the words of the angel in Testimonies number one, right in the first page. The angel said, must, and they changed the word to shouldest. And um, that's why I do not recommend them. Okay, right, uh, right here in the center of your screen now is Testimony for the Church number 29. And then next one down is number 30. I recommend that you get a piece of paper and write on the paper what um, numbers that you are getting, So, that, however you want to organize it. But you need to keep track because you're going to go through here and... Uh, there's going to be different variations. Here is testimony number 22. You can tell the original ones because they, they are paperback and they're beat up, most all of them, because they've been around for more than 100 years. Now here's testimonies number 12 and here is number 8. And in order to get the next ones, Right down here in this bottom right corner is the menu. One, two, three, four, five, and you go through these until you get all 30 numbers. And up here at the top is the same menu. And you can, these are page numbers and it'll reload to the next page. We'll click on number two. And right here is number 14, testimonies number 14. And you skip all these other ones. This one, um, this one is actually a good one. It's 1872 testimony of the Battle Creek Church. You can grab that one. Um, 1868 testimony for the Battle Creek Church. Uh, you can grab that one. Um, this is 1872, same, there, see though, if they have a duplicate, it will be there. Okay, you just keep scrolling down, and here is testimony number 22, so you need to grab that one. So, I'll show you what I do as I right-click again and open it in a new tab, especially for this one not just number 22, but now you have to go back over here to this uh, new beta version and you got your password here and you should already be logged in. I am and you can do the same thing. So we're going to do the advanced search again and we'll type in white W-H-I-T-E, and click on Ellen's name and the title. You want I oh, and testimony for the church. And then you have to click on search. Now, this is the first time I've done this. And... Uh, this one is an appeal to the Battle Creek Church, uh, 1870. That would be a good date, and you can get that. This one right here is selections from the testimonies 1903. I wouldn't touch that one. 
Here you have uh, other selections. Down here is your page and count per pages. So I would, I'd use the maximum, go 42, and then it'll load up the rest of these. Special testimonies. Where is our original authentic testimony? So we have to go to page two. Okay, now we're starting to show them. Oh, excellent. Okay, you have to remember with these, um, let's see. We want only the old dates and so right here is our first one, uh, number 14. So you have to click on this because you cannot right click. I'll get rid of that other tab and so it is loading up. Okay, so this is number 14, and it's nice, pretty clean. Some of them are brutally messed up, and it's, again, it's obscure until it gets, loads up a true full image. There we go. Now it's nice and clean. This would be a great one to click over here and you can see the little arrow or circle thing going round and round and it's telling me to wait okay and now you can click on the download button right there and you click on it and it wants tells you where to save it um, I have my computer set so that every time I download something, it asks me where to put it because I like that. Some people do it differently. So however you do it, I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't need it. So that shows you how to do that. That takes care of the testimonies, spiritual gifts. I'm showing them at ten dollars a piece they're now up to thirteen dollars and that's at your Adventist Book Center again life incidents it's 22 I think it's yeah still twenty two dollars okay and then the present truth number 11 you can get it individually if you want for sure you should have at least that one but I'm going down here to where it is I right click and load it up present truth was the first name that James White chose and then he changed the name to the Advent Review and right here is where the name change happened. We have July, August, September, December, then March, April, May, and then November, 1850. And that's the last of the present truth. It was moved and uh, the press was moved. James White moved and uh, they actually started printing in August. So this number 11 has a very critically important vision that you need to have because this is where we learn the fact originally, this is the first time this vision, any part of it was published. And that 
is that the pioneers that were in all the messages, that means the first angel's message, the midnight cry, the second angel's message, and the third angel's message, those men are the ones who set present truth for us today. A lot of people don't like that. It's very humiliating and humbling just to accept what God has given us. Okay. Um, this is a different site altogether. That's why I'm showing you this. So we'll X out of this and go, go back here to this video. And we have um, the White Estate. This is, again, another video. Uh, the Comprehensive Research Edition. They have it for a donation as a download if you're interested in that. And you can go through this and get this as a download. I bought it actually back in 2008. Um, so I didn't need the download. I have the other stuff. Now you can scroll down here and right here is a link for the Adventist Book Center. And we'll right click on that, open it in a new tab, and here it is. You can get it as a CD ROM for 20 bucks. Either way, I highly recommend it. It's a great tool, and it has a lot of proof of what is really going on, and you'll, if you don't have it, it's very, very much worth the money. Okay, so get out of this and this and this. There we go. Okay, uh, this is Gail Ripplinger's site. And again, I highly recommend this book, In Awe Thy Word. It's like $30 and hazardous materials. A lot of people think that they have to understand Greek and Hebrew in order to get the true meaning of God's Word. Now, this is totally not true. In order to get the true meaning, you need to go to God, and God, in His Word, gives you the definition of other words. And it's very amazing to go through that and do that. Um, this book right here, In All Thy Word, I highly recommend that. So now I have some new links to add, and we'll get into that. We have been through each one of these, Spiritual Gifts, Life Incidents, and the software updates. This is the Review and Herald. This link, we have to copy it. This is my word processor, and we'll get back over here and click Paste and Go. The reason I'm showing you this is because James White was the author of did most of the writing for these early issues and other people joined him and helped him and I think he he wrote quite a bit of the present truth articles and more of these you need to go through these each one of these is downloadable again I right click on it open it in a new tab and here it is the Second Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, number one, volume one. And it is, it, there is a lot of good, excellent reading in these, but in particular, the information that James White has. 
Um, so you can download it from this tab or you can go here again and right click on any one of these in Firefox and then you can click save link as and so when I click on this then it gives me a choice of where to send it and save it but that's because I selected that in my machine now I'm scrolling down to the bottom of this page and I'm going to show you something very important because there are a great many you have right here 100 issues 1 to 100 in this little tiny arrow down here at the bottom I click on that arrow and it brings up a new page and it come down here to the bottom and you'll see we have the next 100 issues right here um, it takes time and it's boring as I'll get out <laughs> because I've done it. I have downloaded every one of these up through 1881 where James White died and some a little beyond. But excellent reading and it's all here for free for you. And I highly recommend that you do some of that. Okay, now Let's close these out and we'll go back here and I have a link. This is local church Bible publishers right here. This is where I recommend you get your King James Bible and I'm going to highlight this, copy it, put it in this link and show you these people ha I clicked on Bibles and books and I scrolled down here to it's called the executive ironed calf and uh, I'm gonna right click on this link open it a new tab and this one right over here you can see my mouse and it's this one again I right click open it in a new tab and when you look at this the text and everything in the sample is uh, very blurry you can click on it here left click but again I like to right click open it in a new tab it'll load up while I'm still looking at this page the price of this one is sixty dollars I bought mine for fifty dollars this one feels so nice in your hand you will be amazed at how nice it feels. This is what it looks like all in focus and they show you the size of it here so that you understand and you can get other Bibles but I don't recommend anything but the King James and even these have little things here and there they misspell things but um, in the whole it's very very good and I'm going to show you where to get us where to get a 1611 if you want but this is the note takers Bible and I really really like mine because there's no other notes here it's just open space and it leaves you a lot of room to make the notes that need to be made in a Bible 
and it's not just a one inch margin. You got room to really write something. And I on purpose write small. So this is the $60 local church Bible publishers. These people produce these Bibles and sell them at their cost. So we go back over here, and here is where you get your um, 1611 King James Bible. Now, if you want, you can get the Super Deluxe Edition. That's a thousand bucks. The Deluxe Edition is 325 and I got this little one for 100 bucks, And it is a photocopy reproduction of the original 1611. These first two editions are full size, four times the size of the one that I have, which is regular eight and a half by 11. So they shrank it down. And uh, I just could not spend that kind of money on the other ones, but feel free if you'd like. I am working on, well, I want to be able to publish wide margin study books of this authentic spirit of prophecy. That is my thing. But again, that's where you can get your authentic 1611 King James Bible.